Jeff Passan, the great baseball writer from Yahoo Sports, who joins us now. So Jeff set it up when you talked to Wainwright about grooving the pitch in the first inning to Jeter. How did the conversation go? You know, he just sort of alluded to it. It was a little surprising, actually, that uh, he would come out and speak as openly as he did about it. But that's exactly what happened. I mean, it was unprompted. You know, nobody asked, did you groove him a pitch? It was more, uh, you know, take us through your night. And he said he gave him a couple of, wanted to give him a couple of pipe shots. And everybody was like, well, that's really interesting because, uh, you know, if you're going to do that, normally it's, it's, uh, it's not the type of thing you admit to. Uh, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, think that it took away from the moment. But, look, uh, I think Adam Wainwright is getting maligned completely unfairly because, uh, frankly, and Glenn Perkins said this to me last night, this is what you should do. You should give him a couple of easy ones to hit because everybody is coming there to see Derek Jeter get a hit, and that's what this All-Star game should be about. But it's an exhibition, or at least it used to be, if Chan Ho Park wants to serve up to a meatball to Cal Ripken Jr., but he didn't say he did, I don't think. I, I think it's one thing to say you did it. It's another thing to do it. I'm fine if you did it. I, I'm not fine that you admit you did it because it takes away from Jeter. So I think what he was trying to do actually is a negative uh, when people look at Derek Jeter with that first hit. See, my, my rationale behind that, though, is by saying it, I think that's just a, a sign of the ultimate respect you have for the guy. That you're saying it's important for baseball and it's important for Derek Jeter to have a really good moment in a game like this. And that, you know what, the, the absurdity that this game counts for something, the absurdity that uh, it, it's an exhibition with meaning, which yeah. is the biggest oxymoron in the world, uh, is, is highlighted by this, by this entire episode. Adam Wainwright, frankly, should be celebrated for giving Derek Jeter an easy pitch to hit because Derek Jeter then took it and gave us all what we wanted to see. I mean, everybody who saw Derek Jeter slice a double down the right field line was like, that is the Derek jeter thing to do right there with that pitch. Well, I agree with that, that it's Derek Jeter to slice a double down the line, Jeff. But, you know, Jeter didn't need help on the other 3,000 hits he had. No, but a 90-mile-per-hour fastball is not an easy thing to hit, whether you're a 40-year-old shortstop or whether you're a 20-year-old prospect coming up. <laughs> and you know what? If you can get that, uh, that canvas on which to paint – uh, another moment or another memory. I have no problem with Adam Wainwright giving it to him. And, and I honestly, and look, maybe part of this was me seeing him afterward and how torn up he was. Cause Adam Wainwright, you know, people who saw him for the first time last night, yeah. they hear a little bit of a Southern accent. They may jump to conclusions. He is one of the most thoughtful, intelligent, interesting people in baseball. And I know he meant absolutely no harm and meant to take nothing away from this. And that's why he was just, killing himself afterward, you know, calling himself an idiot and saying he regrets his mistakes and trying to laugh it off. But you could see there was sort of a sadness there that uh, in a game like this that was supposed to be all about Derek Cheater, he had somehow found his way inserted into the story. But why does he feel like an idiot? If, if he did it for the right reasons, stand up for the right reasons. Why cave into social media? Uh, I think it's caving into Major League Baseball wanting to uh, make sure to preserve the supposed integrity that the game has. <laughs> I think that's what it's caving. Uh, that makes me laugh. That wouldn't make me angry. I, you know, yeah. I, I look, I get it. And I went back to a story that Schilling told me 2002 when he said to A-Rod, he even said to me the night before, I'm going to give A-Rod three fastballs right down the plate, and I'm telling him they're coming. A-Rod struck out, but he was still letting him know. I know it happens, but I, I guess the feeling we're supposed to take it a little bit more serious because baseball and Fox have told us that. I, that's the only – that that's the can disconnect please, there for me. Can we please stop? Can we please stop taking it seriously? Like, I'd love to. just stop now? I'd love to, Jeff. I, I mean, it, it just it blows my mind that a game that featured 30 players from the National League, 32 players from the American League, 21 pitchers, and nine innings counts for the World Series home field <laughs> advantage. The, well, blame, the absolute height of absurdity. Jeff, blame that on Fox because they wanted relevancy for the All-Star game because people weren't watching. And they went to baseball and said, look, 
give us some juice here so people actually care and stay till the very end. Yeah, well, I, you know what? I, I made this point in my column today. Uh, you know what I remember from All-Star Games past? I remember Hubble striking out five straight Hall of Famers and Bo Jackson destroying a home run off Rick Russell and Ted Williams coming back and hitting two uh, right out of the war. I do not remember a single final score of an All-Star Game. And that <laughs> right there tells you why All-Star Games should not count because the, the moments and not the final score – are what are relevant. And the moment that Derek Jeter and Adam Wainwright gave us last night was a really good one. I don't know how your day is going, Jeff. I spent the first hour of my day listening to McLovin in the background. Uh, he said that uh, Derek Jeter is the most overrated player in the history of baseball. Was there a laugh track involved with that? <laughs> From me, there was. And then I got angry because he's fighting this to the death about Jeter. Do, okay. You know what? Back 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 in college, I went to school at Syracuse, and I was friends with a bunch of Yankee fans. And I I used to look at Jeter and say he is so ridiculously overrated. Why do you guys have this man crush on him? What is your problem? And then over the years, I just came to appreciate the guy. And I don't just appreciate his baseball skills. I appreciate the fact that he spent 20 years in New York dating the best-looking women in the world, and not one time has anybody had a bad word to say about him. Do you know how difficult that is? I mean, McLevin, you probably went out onto the street trying to talk to the people about Jeter, and they all hate you already. Nobody hates Derek Jeter, and I understand this isn't exactly paralleled with his baseball skill, but when you compound that and being the face of a franchise and the face of a sport for as long as he has with the type of production he has and an entire fistful of rings, it's really tough to call that overrated. But you're talking about intangibles and off-the-field stuff. I was talking about as a player. You know. Yeah, but the intang- look, the intangibles, I think, actually matter when you play in a place like New York for a team like the Yankees. I think that's all part of the package. Uh, by the way, they hated McLovin before he got out on the street, Jeff, not after he got out on the street. Uh, hey, thank you for joining us. Uh, I know uh, you got busy day traveling, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Pleasure's all mine, pals. Have a great day. All right. All right. Jeff Passon, Yahoo baseball writer.